Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Perkins Engineering YouTube channel. I've teased this episode for a long time, and thanks to our presenting partner this year in Automation Solutions, we've been able to bring a lot more content to you, and we're really proud of taking this episode on the road. We're in Wodonga and Country Victoria at Amiga Technical Engineering, and they're a big customer of Automation Solutions. And we want to show you who Automation Solutions are, what they do, so let's get inside, check out some of the machines, and meet Brett Inman from Automation Solutions. Well, here's the uh, man of the hour, Brett. Fantastic to see you and introduce you to our YouTube channel. And uh, thank you for your support of the Perkins Engineering YouTube channel. Quick one, why did you want to get involved with us? Oh, just that interest of uh, motorsport and all things kind of technical, the engineering things. I love LP growing up you know, what he was able to do in the scheme of things. So, to, and, and yeah, stories I heard growing up. So yeah, just thought that um, if I can help get some of those stories out there, it'd be great and thought I'll get on board. That's no, brilliant, mate. And we spoke about um, coming and doing an episode on automation solutions. Now quickly, give us a bit of a rundown on, on your background and automation solutions. Uh, yeah, so family run business, been running about 11 years. I started in automotive as a maintenance sparky many years ago. Um, and yeah, just had an interest in the automation side of things. We had that in automotive. Interest grew and never planned on it. But yeah, here I am working for myself 10 years on. Well, it's great. Now, I've got an enormous interest in these machines. So why don't we go over and have a look at some of these uh, robots you've got here at Amiga Technical, and you can show us how they work. For sure, let's do it. Okay, Brett, so tell me about this particular machine and what it's doing. It's picking up a raw billet. It's exchanging it with a finished billet inside the machine, putting the finished one on an outgoing pallet. Once, once it's here, it's set up for a grid of parts, so they can dial in. They've got an 8x8 grid or a 6x6. They enter the dimensions and away it goes. I don't get involved once it's, once it's installed. So it's quite self-sufficient and this stuff just amazes me, mate. And, and it's not just restricted to automotive industries, is it? We've seen on the Perkins Engineering YouTube video, we shared a video of Brett's where the robot was spraying cows, for yeah. example. Yeah, that's pretty exciting where that yeah, where that eventuates, I don't know, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. Now, a machine like this, for example, why would have Amiga Technical reached out to you? What are they trying to achieve by using a robot solution? I think the biggest one's been utilisation of labour. You know, they've got smart people that I think are best utilised doing smart tasks like quality control and machine settings. So to have them standing there loading parts when they could be, you know, adding more value in different parts of the businesses. So I think utilisation of labour is number one. Right, so the, we can see the machine. So that's opening the door. Yep. And now what's it doing? Uh, it'll be going and getting the finished part out of the machine. It's then going to perform an air blast so it cleans any swarf out of the chuck. And then it'll put that raw billet back in. So while it's doing the door operations, is this machine is, I don't know how old, but it was never optioned with a robot interface. So we've been able to integrate the robot with um, yeah, their existing equipment, which means they didn't need to you know, outlay uh, mega cash to buy a new machine. Oh, there it goes. I find this, look at it, it's shutting the door. My wife would like me to have something like this at home, I reckon, but, and it's putting the finished part down there, and then watch this, comes back over here, and it's grabbing up another piece of raw material here, picks it up and puts it, oh, this is just fascinating, isn't it? And these machines can run through the night, for example, Brett? Yeah, they don't need lights on. Yeah, it's a pretty common term, lights lights out operations. So, and Amiga are getting on board with that now. They're, they're queuing up queuing up um, enough parts that they'll, they'll do a run through the day and then they'll be able to run through the night with no one around and have finished parts in the morning. And uh, a bit of a question, people at home are probably wondering, if I walked in there, is it likely the robot might smack me in the head or something? Very, very unlikely. Uh, yeah, these are built to strict standards, industrial robots. You've got Australian standards as well that say, you know, we've got this strong fence, we've got light curtains. So once we go in there, the robot's disabled. That's, that is great. You've got another bigger, newer machine here. Can we go and have a look at that one as well? Let's go and have a look. Okay, 
Okay, Brett, so this is the newest machine you've put in here at Amiga, and I tell you, I'm blown away by the size of this thing and the size of the multi-axis machine behind us. Tell us about this machine. It's the same as the other one, it's just bigger. So we've got a bigger machine behind us, as you commented, it's, it's, it's massive. So we needed a bigger robot to be able to reach in and out. The bigger robot has a bigger payload, so yeah, it's a, it's a much larger robot, still performing the same task. It's, it's loading a raw part and presenting the finished part on the outgoing pallet. So I believe this is a six axis machine. So tell yep. us what's the six axis part? Uh, so six axis is there to pretty much replicate whatever your hand can do. So all those six axis moving around, it can pivot from the bottom. We've got the first arm, the upper arm, the wrist pivots and moves all around. So you get six axis of freedom. Uh, there, there's, other, there's other robots that are five and four axes and they're just more for palletizing. So pick up square, put down square. And how long does it take you to, I guess, unpack a machine like this and set it up here to be a functional working machine? Every, every project's kind of different. These machine tending ones are, are, are pretty quick, probably, I don't know, th three to four days. Quite quick to, to get it in a, into the production scheme. And we are in behind the safety cage. Obviously, we're, we're not functioning <laughs> at, at the moment. Yep. But that plays an important part. And tell us a little bit about the cage itself. Yeah, so my, the, the safety fencing that I use is, um, is Australian made. It's from a company down in Melbourne called Celtech. Um, yeah, just again, making sure things are safe. That's what they do. They provide safety fencing for the industry. So um, again, I can sleep at night knowing that the, the people that are using the machine are safe. Well, I'm keen to see if we can get this one to do a few movements and uh, have, a, have a bit of a look and see what it's capable of. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Shane Forbes, you're the Managing Director of Amiga Technical. Firstly, thanks for having us here today to check out your facility. It's a great facility. And tell us about the business. Amiga has been going since 2004. We're a subcontracting company. And we have our own proprietary product of Ross Performance Parts, which is high performance automotive industry side of stuff. It's great, and we've checked out your place. We, we think it's fantastic, but we're fascinated by these robots and the automation solutions. Tell us, why did you get involved in robots and why did you call Brett from Automation Solutions? Brett, so I got introduced to Brett by one of my technicians that does a lot of our maintenance stuff for us um, in that space and he introduced me to Brett and it was a godsend. Every question I had, Brett answered. For us, automation's about getting more runtime and utilising our manpower, which is currently at a shortage, to keep production running, keep up with their demands. Um, Ross exports 50% of what it makes. So globally around with where it is and the demand's only getting greater. And one last question, we've seen that the two of the machines you've got here, is there more scope now for Amiga to get more and more of these uh, robots? Yeah, look, so we've got another, we've got another big Akuma turning up um, later this year. It should be installed before Christmas. It's going to be automated as well. So all of our process is coming through. The real, Amiga is not looking at buying another machine without automation. Fantastic. Thanks again for having us around. We're looking forward to seeing more and more of Amiga Technical and these automation solutions. Thanks for coming. Well, Brett, it's been great to check out Amiga Technical and some of your features in the building here, but something I've really taken out of the building, the business, um, it's not about replacing people, is it? It's about maximising the efficiency. And this team have even named this robot and it's got a set of eyes on there, I notice. Yeah, it's, it's very common that uh, once the robots start operating that people get familiar with them, they turn in a, you know, another workmate, they get names, they get called business owners' names, their kids' names, ex-workers, current workers' names. But once they realise that the robots are here to help them, then yeah, they get, in, get included and part of the team. It's excellent and we've really enjoyed it. We have to thank Brett and Automation Solutions for their support of the Perkins Engineering YouTube channel. So thank you very much, Brett. And we've really enjoyed coming on the road for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe our channel. Jump on Automation Solutions Australia, their Facebook page and their YouTube channel. And if you need one of these little uh, robots, give Brett a call. Thanks again for watching.